It made contact. Elon Musk just leaked Voyager's shocking discovery in space. It is easy to confuse who someone is with what they do, resulting in a stereotype that fits neatly into a storybook view of the world. Our culture requires villains and heroes, fools and geniuses, scapegoats and role models at all times. Despite popular belief, Elon Musk is not a robot sent from the future to save civilization. He's also not a Silicon Valley genius whose emotional intelligence has been replaced by supercomputer-like intelligence. He's an engineer, inventor, and technologist, as he puts it. And as a naturally gifted engineer, he had his sights set on the stars since he was six years old, when he was fascinated by a NASA probe called Voyager. He had been following Voyager ever since, and now in 2022, as a space industry leader, he has revealed a shocking Voyager discovery. But what exactly is this discovery and what does it mean for our planet? Let's jump into this video and find out. On September 5th, 1977, the iconic Voyager 1 space probe blasted off from Cape Canaveral Air Force Base with the mission of studying and exploring the outer solar system and points beyond. Today, at a distance of about 14.6 billion miles from Earth, it is the most distant spacecraft from Earth and continues to speed away at about 38,000 miles per hour. In the direction of the constellation Ophiuchus, Voyager 1 was envisioned as part of NASA's grand tour of the solar system, which planned to visit all of the outer planets, including then the planet Pluto. Pioneer 10 was sent to Jupiter and Pioneer 11 was sent to Jupiter and Saturn, heralding the start of the grand tour. The ridiculous cost of each of these one-of-a-kind spacecraft forced NASA to abandon the Grand Tour in favor of the Mariner Jupiter Saturn, later renamed Voyager. To your surprise, Voyager 2 was launched before Voyager 1. It departed Earth on August 20, 1977, with Voyager 1 following on September 5th. Since the two spacecraft had different trajectories, Voyager 2 had to go in first in order to align perfectly for each target. Even though Uranus and Neptune weren't officially part of the trajectory yet, whereas Voyager 1 had to launch faster in order to reach Jupiter first, the primary mission of these two car-sized probes was to visit Jupiter and Saturn. But the team of engineers designed the Voyagers so that they could continue on to Uranus and Neptune. Carl Sagan, the legendary astronomer and space scientist, convinced the team that a close flyby of Titan, Saturn's largest moon, was essential during mission planning. Titan has a thick, mostly nitrogen atmosphere, and the atmospheric pressure is 50% higher than Earth. In addition to studying Titan, which paved the way for the now defunct Cassini-Huygen mission and the upcoming Titan Dragonfly mission, Voyager 1 made history on February 14, 1990, when it returned to its original trajectory and took one final photo, the pale blue dot. The photograph of a tiny dot against the backdrop of space was taken at an unprecedented distance of 6 billion kilometers, or 40.5 astronomical units. It was one of the images in Voyager 1's family portrait, which featured a mosaic of 60 frames and frames of 6 planets, revealing their relative positions. Earth is smaller than a single pixel in the famous pale blue dot photograph. The Earth, as seen from space, is a mere speck of dust suspended in a moonbeam. Look again at that dot. That's here. That is home. That is us. Everyone you love and everyone you know, everyone you've ever heard of, every human being who has ever existed has lived their lives on it. The two probes, which are powered by nuclear-powered systems known as radioisotope thermoelectric generators, continued to fly. Our solar system has no clear boundary, but they passed through the termination shock in the 2000s, at which solar wind particles abruptly slow behind the speed of sound due to its pressure from gas and magnetic fields in interstellar space. Then came the waiting game. When would Voyager 1 reach interstellar space? Voyager 1 contributed to the discovery that the helio sheath was not smooth but rather contained massive bubbles the size of a single astronomical unit, which are thought to be formed by the interaction of solar wind and the interstellar medium. Since it was pushed sideways by interstellar wind, Voyager 1 passed through the region where solar wind could travel in December 2010. There has been no detection of solar wind since then. 
Voyager 1 entered cosmic purgatory on the outermost layer of the bubble that surrounds our solar system in December 2011 at a distance of about 11 billion miles from Earth. Charged particles from the Sun are less powerful, the Sun's magnetic field is more compressed, and high-energy nanoparticles leak from the solar system into interstellar space. The interaction between interstellar space and the Sun's energy fields is becoming more visible at this point. Scientists continued to debate whether or not Voyager 1 had entered interstellar space. The instruments on Voyager 1 had been silent. One of Voyager 1's instruments was designed to detect plasma waves. The denser the plasma, the higher the frequency of these waves. For nine years, there had been no plasma as Voyager 1 traveled through the heliosphere's bubble. They were insulated from the plasma. But finally in August 2012, it detected plasma that was colder, indicating entry into interstellar space. Now, as Voyager continues to travel through space, they are discovering new things such as waves of interstellar plasma. They are becoming more dense. The deeper Voyager 1 travels into interstellar space, the denser the waves of interstellar plasma appear to become. Space scientists have a lot of disagreements about the dense plasma layers, and Elon Musk is investigating this discovery for upcoming space missions. Four instruments on Voyager 1 and five on Voyager 2 are now measuring the magnetic field strength, plasma density, and the energy and direction of charged particles in the environment they're traveling through. The interstellar mission's goal is to measure the sun's effects as we travel away from Earth. NASA is investigating the interaction of the sun's heliosphere with interstellar space. Voyager 1 is currently 14.6 billion miles away from Earth, and Voyager 2 is 12.1 billion miles away. But the nearest star is 25 trillion miles away. But they've always had a secondary mission, to communicate with any aliens from beyond the solar system who might happen to peer inside a craft. Each one is accompanied by a golden record, which resembles vinyl but is made of metal. A team of scientists and artists packed each record with music, nature sounds, messages, photos, and more. And they included players and instructions in case anyone found them. The ambitious project aims to tell a story about human civilization, aspirations, and our world. The record features Bach, Chuck Berry music, as well as images of families, homes, and scientific discoveries. Unlike the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, unlike the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, the records are not designed to be led up to the first contact. In fact, the golden records could be discovered millions of years from now, perhaps when human civilizations have vanished. It's more like discovering a fossil. You can't communicate with the dinosaurs. This is a relic, sort of our obituary, a reminder that we were once here. The spacecraft have lasted far longer than anyone expected, and the instruments are still operational and the data is still excellent. They are, however, showing signs of aging. The Voyager probes may have only a few years, if not a decade, left in them. Their dwindling power will eventually be insufficient to power their instruments. The Voyager will then serve as our silent ambassadors. They will carry humanity's message in a bottle as they hurtle into the unknown at 35,000 miles per hour in their powered down machines. The Golden Record, a piece of human civilization and technology with a 1970s stamp on it, will live on. It is not demeaning. It will last for billions of years. It will outlive the planet from which it came. It could be our descendants, rather than aliens, who discover the far-flung spacecraft. The message could very well be for us. We'll be the ones to go find it, in the distant future when it's easy to travel and be tourists and see the voyagers. We'll think to ourselves, wasn't that one of the most amazing things we did as a species in the 20th century? That pretty much concludes this video, guys. Let us know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. We would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching. And remember, make sure to subscribe to this channel with bell notifications on if you enjoy watching our content. We upload some pretty awesome stuff here, which you'll certainly enjoy. So hit a like on the video, leave a comment below, and see you guys in the next one.